Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. We have a bunch of updates on a lot of stories we've been covering, and then we're going to dive into the royal tour of Sophie and Edward. I think they're doing a great job. Let's just take a look, shall we? Let's go. To start with, remember the video I did about the slap heard round the world from Will Smith? Well, things are now getting even worse as more of his projects are being canceled. Now, while the sequel was canceled, the National Geographic Nature series was called Pole to Pole, and it was going to follow him to the North and South Poles, and it was supposed to begin filming in three weeks. And it's been paused now until the fall of 2022. Now, Will Smith had other projects lined up that have been, you know, put down. A movie for Sony was delayed. Another project for Netflix, Fast and Loose. It's all just seemingly falling apart. But I guess that's what happens when you go around physically assaulting people on national television. Actually, international television. Hmm. All right, moving on. All right, we all know what's going on with Netflix. I reported on it yesterday um, about, you know, the decrease in subscriptions and the, the, the millions of dollars in losses. And supposedly, Meghan and Harry are going to face more pressure from Netflix to develop more content. Problem is, they've hardly developed anything as it is. So they did a poll. God, people in their polls. They did a poll asking, can Harry and Meghan help boost Netflix after what's going on? 99% of those who responded said no. Nope. 0% said yes. 1% said I don't know. Uh, yeah, no. They haven't produced anything. And I don't think what they're producing is going to be worth the darn. So I don't see how they can help. All right, moving on. All right, next story is that Princess Anne, it looks like, is going to replace Prince Harry as head of the Royal Marines. Personally, I think that would be absolutely fabulous. Woman power. And she's done her time with the military. I think she's fabulous. I think she would do a great job. Good for her. All right, for our next story, pay attention to this clip. Do you remember when Harry said this? Feels that way as well. Does um, it? Yeah, it is. We've been welcomed with open arms yeah. um, and it's got such a great community up in Santa Barbara. So, so you feel, feel like good. that's home more for you? Well, the neighbors in Montecito were like, uh, they've been a no show since they showed up. We don't know what he's talking about. Now, there's a man named Richard Menards, I hope I'm saying that correctly, who writes a gossip column for the Montecito Journal. And he says the people there, <clears throat> excuse me, are reeling from the reported lack of integration into the community. They have not become part of the community and people are upset that they said that because it's such a nice place to go out and they've been a no-show. They have not attempted to integrate themselves with the neighbors or, you know, have anything to do with the neighbors or any of the neighborhood things, you know, the, the Halloween parades and, you know, the things that they do. They've done nothing to integrate themselves. So the neighbors are like, we don't know what they're talking about when it comes to open arms because we've never met them. All right, the last story we're going to cover before we get into the royal tour is this article that came out that said Harry and Meghan have hired the aide that got Barack Obama um, elected for a second term. Now, this person they hired, um, her name is, let me see if I can pronounce this, I'm, I apologize, Miranda Barbot. Um, okay. So they've hired her and of course people went, oh, you know, Megan has political ambitions. No, no. She's there to help them with their battered image because their image, even after Invictus, is really, really bad. There's so many controversies from the Obama Winfrey, you know, interview where almost everything they said was proven to be lies and where they meddled in the... Um, political stuff going on here in the United States, to the letters she wrote to Congress, the Duchess of Sussex, you know, all of this kind of stuff. People are so turned off by them that at this point, they're trying anything and anybody to fix their 
image. Even Invictus, which was supposed to be such a great thing, ended up being the Harry and Meghan pony show where she wore hundreds of thousands of dollars in jewelry and $90,000 worth of clothes in front of veterans that are on fixed budgets. It's just, yeah, this is their last inch attempt to try to turn it around. I don't think it's going to work. People aren't that stupid. Yeah. All right, let's move on. All right, I showed you some of these pictures yesterday, but let's really get into the tour. So Sophie and Edward landed at the airport in St. Lucia. Here is a video to pretty much shows what happened. So, you know, in order. And by the way, I, I took the sound out because there was a band playing in the background and they played the same tune over and over and over again, and it was extremely annoying. So anyway, the plane landed, they came off the plane, they met the people at the bottom of the stairs, you guys know how that works. Then of course, they had to, I guess it's called inspecting the troops, is what I guess it's called, when you look at the military people that are standing there. And then after they inspected the troops, they walked over to a podium area that had already been set up and I don't know if Prince Edward gave a speech at that point or if they just welcomed them to the country I don't know how that worked but anyway here's the video of what they were doing now it's been reported that they received a very 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 warm welcome from everybody there at the airport I've said it before and I'll say it again. Sophie always exudes class and style and Edward as well. And I'm very happy that these two are being given the opportunity to step up and take some of the slack off of Catherine and William. Good for them. So they left the airport and they went to meet dignitaries, notably the prime minister. They met the prime minister of St. Lucia and they exchanged what looks to be some absolutely beautiful gifts. I love that painting. I really do. Um, they exchanged some gifts and everything seemed to be just fine in St. Lucia. Good for them. Now, as it is in any tour, we have to look at the outfit. That red dress that Sophie was wearing cost 1,068 pounds or 1,371 US dollars. You know, I always find articles like this to be suspicious. The item, the dress that she's wearing, retails for a whopping $1,068 or pounds. That is a drop in the bucket compared to what Megan wore for three days at Invictus. Like, are you kidding? Not long after that, they arrived at St. Vincent and the Grenadines. When they landed, they got to meet the Governor General of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's a woman, I love that. Dom Susan Dugan at the Argyle International Airport in Argyle. Love it. Now, articles like this started coming out, warning them, throwing a, a, a wrench in the tour, warning them not to make sanctimonious speeches about slavery. I don't think they had any intention of saying anything about it at all. I think William and Catherine already did. There's nothing more to be said. I mean, what more could they possibly say? You know, Prince Albert, Victoria's husband, already apologized for it. Reparations were already made. They were financed until, what, I think just a few years ago, you guys were paying in taxes in the UK for that. So I don't know what all of this is all about at this point. So they took what I term as a small hopper plane because they're just like hopping from place to face, if, if that makes any sense. Anyway, they arrived. Now, apparently with the COVID restrictions there, they immediately had to put masks on like the second they stepped off the plane, which is actually what they did. So Edward was a gentleman. He helped her off the plane. She was handed some absolutely gorgeous flowers and then they went down the receiving line. So they did the same thing at this airport that they did at the other. They inspected the troops. They went over to the podium. I don't know, again, if he gave a speech, not sure what's happening, but it seems like they do the same thing at the air, each different airport. I will say it looks like a beautiful area. I wouldn't mind visiting there one day if I ever get to go on vacation. All right, moving on. Now I was paying close attention to Sophie's outfit. Very nice for that, for that climate, beautiful purse, very, very interesting choice of clothing, but, but well done. And of course, you know, I was going to price it out. I, I don't think that it would be fair to price out Kate's stuff and price out Megan's stuff if I don't price out Sophie's stuff. You know what I mean? You got to be fair. So Sophie stepped off in a 365 pound or $485 dress. 
she was wearing Penelope Chilver's um, sandals, but they're sandals that she has owned for years and years. And years ago, they cost 159 pounds or 204 American US dollars. Now, Sophie was also carrying a Sophie Habsburg handbag, which masked her dress. And as you can see, it wasn't that expensive. The bag is 320 pounds or $411, very affordable. Now she was also wearing a bangle bracelet that was 115 pounds or $147. And it's from a company that has a royal warrant, which I think is really cool. So they had several stops to make and I don't know if I'm putting these in the right order. So just bear with me. So one of the stops they made was so that the Earl of Wessex or Edward could present the Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award to a recipient at the government house in Kingstown. It's a fabulous accomplishment. I'm happy to see them giving the award, but I have to say, man, is that guy tall. <laughs> I'm like, it makes Edward and Sophie look like midgets. Anyway, congratulations to him for winning the award. Now, when Sophie and Edward arrived at the government house in Kingstown, they were greeted by a lot of school children. So as usual, they made their way down the line. They stopped to speak to some of the children. I think this is very sweet. Edward on one side, Sophie on the other. And it's my understanding that the girls that you see standing there are what they call girl guides, which is kind of cool. Now, obviously, they're, they're only there for one day, so they have a lot of ground to cover. And for Sophie, as part of her need to champion for support and equality for blind and partially sighted people, she's going to meet representatives of two organizations called Persons with Disabilities and the Society for and of the Blind. She's also going to meet a women's group to hear about their role in the community's response to last year's eruption of the volcano. Now, Sophie and Edward also planted a tree to mark the Queen's 70 years as monarch before hearing about how the country responded to the COVID-19 pandemic. Edward went on his own single tour thing that he had to take care of, and he went to the island's national stadium where he met athletes that were training for Birmingham's Commonwealth Games. Pretty cool. He observed two sprint races, which were being held in honor of the Platinum Jubilee. And he also watched the end of a T10 women's cricket match and some of the country's netball and tennis teams. Pretty cool. Now, I should say that while Sophie and Edward were at the Botanical Gardens, they visited an aviary, I guess is what you say, and they saw the national bird of St. Vincent's. Looks like a beautiful bird. Well, the bird went a little nutso. <laughs> <laughs> went after Sophie's sunglasses. Watch this. <laughs> so overall, I have to say that the first two days of their tour has gone very, very well and has been well received. Good for them. Okay, one more little thing I wanted to throw in here. Arlene Pina put this up about the subscribe button because she said she noticed that she wasn't receiving notifications when a video uploaded. So she decided to play with the button and this is what she discovered by accident and it works for her. So if you just follow the directions above and see if that works for you as far as making sure that you're subscribed and you're getting notifications. So I want your comments about what you think about the tour and what do you think about um, Netflix being saved by Harry and Meghan and what do you think about Will Smith's stuff being canceled and what do you think about Princess Anne taking that military appointment? So much information. So don't forget to leave your comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future uploads. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Getter. You can follow me on Rumble. You can email me. To those who have donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.